Hey there, it's Professor S, and in this video for about the next five minutes or so, I want to talk about the sodium potassium exchange pump. Now, one of my other videos, I talk about the distinction between active and passive transport, and I mention the sodium potassium pump as a really common or ubiquitous form of active transport. I want to actually give a whole video to it because it's that important, especially if you think you're going to go into healthcare, you must know what this pump does to understand things like the nervous system and the urinary system. Now, before I get into the function of the pump, just a few things to keep in mind as you watch this video. One, the animation in no way is attempting to show you the actual physical structure of the protein. The goal here is to show you conceptually how it works, so just keep that in mind. Two, I currently am standing on the outside of the cell. The fluid around me is the extracellular or interstitial fluid. On the other side of the membrane down there is the cytoplasm or fluid within the cell. That orientation is important. Also, know what you're looking for in the ions. In this video, sodium will be blue circles, potassium will be pink boxes, pink squares. And then finally, just remember, sodium is concentrated on the outside of the cell and potassium on the inside. That's also important to understanding the process. So with that said, let's jump on into this. Now before we go any further, Let's make the, the protein transparent so we can see inside. And you should notice there are five binding sites in there. Three kind of ovoid binding sites for sodium and two square ones for potassium. But in this conformation of the protein, you should notice the sodium looks really available, the binding sites look available, and the potassium not so much. In this conformation, the protein has a high affinity for sodium and a low affinity for potassium, meaning even though sodium concentration on this side of the membrane is low, it's going to bind very easily to this pump because of its high affinity for those binding sites. In fact, here comes some sodium ions right now. As those sodium ions bind to their binding sites, notice we get our induced fit as the protein binds back. But not just that, it induces a conformational change in the protein. And if you look down below, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Right up here, there's a binding site that wasn't there before. Sodium binding to its binding site in this conformation for the protein induces the formation of this other binding site. And this is an ATP binding site. And we can see ATP coming on over here and binding to it. And it's transferring one of its phosphates to the sodium potassium exchange pump, becoming ADP. And with that phosphate transfer comes energy. The energy that's released when phosphate attaches to the pump is then used to drive another conformational change that's far more dramatic. In fact, you can see the entire internal structure of the protein is shifting and moving sodium towards the outside. Once it gets into this final conformation, its affinity for sodium drops and sodium is released. And the release of sodium induces yet another conformational change in which the potassium binding sites become available and have a high affinity for potassium. And you know, because of that high affinity, here comes some potassium to bind with those sites. Now, if we look, potassium has now bound and we got another case of induced fit and that's going to drive yet another conformational change. Notice that the newest conformational change is to drive the release of that phosphate group. And with that phosphate group goes another release of energy. And that energy drives yet another conformational change that, if you're paying attention, is returning us right back to where we started. In this conformational position, again, the affinity for sodium is high, potassium is low. So the potassium is released, and we're ready to do it again. As we watch it uh, cycle for a few times below me, just bear in mind what we've seen. What this pump does is it moves three sodium ions out of the cell, two potassium ions into the cell per ATP spent, per ATP converted to ADP by releasing its energy through its phosphate group. Uh, the bottom line here is this ratio, three sodium out, two potassium in per ATP spent. The ratio matters, the direction matters, and at the end of the day, this is a great straightforward example of primary active transport, the sodium potassium exchange pump. What the hell are you doing? Um, 
Are you smoldering? No, I'm I'm trying to get the glare out of my, my glasses. It looked like you were smoldering. No. Gla Do the take. Hey, this is Professor S, and if you found that video helpful, here's a couple others that you also might find useful. And don't forget to click the button to subscribe so you can see all the new videos as I put them out. Get off camera now.